Hi, my name is Doug Milford with Lambda Valley. In this video, we'll be talking about enumerations in Rust. Enumerations, or enums, are one of my favorite features of Rust. You may be thinking, really, enumerations? Yes, it's similar to enums in other languages, but with additional features that make it very powerful. To start, let's create a simple payment enum. Let's first only consider cash or credit card. You use the lowercase enum keyword to define your enum and then simply give it the items available. It's simple and easy to use as a variable. In this case, I'm setting some payment to cash and then logic can be used later on in the code based on that setting. I'll just print out which option is hit for the moment. So far, this should feel very familiar if you're coming from a different language. It's just a hard-coded list of options. So here's one of the powerful things about Rusty Noobs. Watch what happens when I add a new item for a debit card. Now we get a compile error on our match statement stating that all options are not covered. It performs an exhaustive check to ensure all scenarios have been handled by your code. This is more powerful than it first seems. Whenever you add new items to enums, there's a danger that code using that enum needs to be updated in order to handle the new item properly. Other languages often don't care and will not alert you to potential issues. The strictness of Rust is a feature, not a bug, and I found the Rust compiler to be extremely helpful. Here, the compiler helps you easily track down all places that might need to be updated. Let's update our match statement to also handle debit card. Once the match statement sees all items handled, it will once again compile. I can hear you saying, eh, that's no good. What if I only want to run code on one or two items out of a hundred? In that situation, you can use an underscore to represent all other items. It's an escape clause from the exhaustive check. I recommend using this only when it makes sense though. Now let's talk about one of my favorite features of enums, which is being able to associate data with an enum item. For example, let's say we want to include an amount with the cash item. Here, I'm just associating an F32 with that item. When someone creates an enum of that type, they then have to include the data needed as well. So let's put $100 on our variable. From there, we can use that extra data in the correct branch of our match statement. I'm gonna pass a variable called AMT to our branch body. That corresponds to the F32 attached to the cash enum item. AMT just stands for amount. The compiler knows that the amount variable is the F32. Note, we could have called it anything we wanted. It could have been the letter A, or a more explicit name like cash payment amount. I just chose AMT to stand for amount. Choose whatever you feel like. Now we can use that data within our branch. Since I only put the F32 on the cash enum item, it's not available on the other items. If I try to pass data to the credit card branch, you'll get a compile error because no data package is defined for that enum item. Let's go ahead and remove that. Note that we're not limited to simple types. We can use more complex tuples such as this, or use a struct such as this. Another option is to create a strongly typed enum item similar to how you would create a struct. All will work just fine and the compiler knows what data should be available per branch of the match statement. I personally prefer items to have explicit names, so I tend to stay away from tuples unless it's obvious what they're representing. That's just a personal preference though, and if tuples work for your situation, go for it. Let me go ahead and fill out the rest of the code in order to give you a complete picture. The credit card has a string and F32 associated with it, so I have to include variables for both. It doesn't really matter to the compiler what names I give them unless there's some type of naming collision. And the debit card is associated with a struct called debit data. So we can use that like this. Again, I'm just gonna call it data, but you can call it whatever you like. Crypto has defined field names in the enum definition, so the names passed into the branch have to match that definition. Now, each branch is using data only specific to it and no other enum item. 
You may or may not see the power of this right away, but in my view, this flow of logic is extremely useful. Currently, I'm using all data passed into each branch. But watch what happens when I simply don't use a piece of data being passed in. Here, the compiler complains that the variable sum f32 is not being used. Now, it's just a warning, but in my view, warnings should be taken with just as much care as errors. If you're not going to use some passed in data, you can just put an underscore in front of it. This tells the compiler you aren't planning on using it, so it should not be considered a warning. Or, you can omit the variable name altogether and just put an underscore. Either way, you're telling the compiler that it was your intention to not use that variable. If you don't at least have a placeholder for the variables you're not using, you'll get a compile error. In this case, it's expecting two pieces of data and it only sees one. You may have noticed that some enum items have had a warning on it for much of this demo. The compiler knows when a enum item is never used and warns you in that situation. Once it sees that a new item is being used anywhere within your code, the warning will go away. If you truly aren't going to use an new item, you can put an underscore in front of it, similar to how we've done with other variables, and that will get rid of the warning. This is useful when you first create your enum and you haven't written code for each item yet. It keeps things clean in the compiler, and you can have a better sense of what needs to be addressed at each step. Let's do a quick refactor of the code to make the payment logic as a function. The reason I'm doing this is so that we can use each item and not have to repeat logic over and over again. I'll speed up the video so that you don't have to wait for me typing. I want to get rid of the compile warnings by using each item at least once. I'm just creating new variables for each item and then feeding it into our new function. As we do, the warnings will go away for each item because now they're being used somewhere within the code. Phew, okay, that was a lot. But now you can see that there are no warnings. The main file has also changed color to white when previously it was yellow. This indicates that there are no more warnings for the entire file. At first, the compiler might feel a little too strict. This is a common complaint when people first learn Rust, but trust me, it catches things that would normally slip by your radar. It will come in handy, particularly when you're refactoring or adding a new item. There are more complex pattern matching scenarios you can do with enums in the match statement, but we'll be diving into that more deeply in a later video. To recap, just like other languages, an enumeration is simply a list of items with a little added sugar. The compiler will ensure that each branch within a match statement is appropriately handled. You can associate enum items with whatever data types you see fit, and then use that data within the branch logic. Once again, my name is Doug Milford with Lambda Valley, and I look forward to seeing you next time.